Uh, this is Frank Fantini, a CEO of Fantini Research and publisher of Fantini's Gaming Report. And today we have Patty Hart, CEO of International Game Technology, the world's biggest gaming supplier. Uh, IGT, as it's commonly known, has had a very interesting history in recent years. Uh, it was a company that once dominated the North American uh, slot machine market with two-thirds market share, primarily because of a lot of monopoly positions it had, such as in wide area progressives. And it was a somewhat insular company, if I may say that. Uh, a lot of guys who knew each other many, many years uh, from up in Reno. Uh, and it, it went on to win a transition, and it was a very difficult time for IGT because it lost a lot of market share. It maybe lost a little bit of that identity. And I think from an outsider, I think there was a little uh, uh, tension between the, the, uh, the, the legacy guys, as you might call it, in Reno and, and the newer folks down in uh, uh, Las Vegas. And, and into that environment uh, stepped Patty Hart. Mm. And Patty has really brought a fresh beginning or re-beginning to IGT. And that has really come into focus, for me at least, within this past year. Uh, so, Patty, uh, maybe you could describe a little bit the IGT of today and where you see it unfolding in the next several years. Yeah, I mean, it has been, I think, a pretty incredible journey um, for us at IGT. And, I mean, actually, probably surprising for many people, I mean, one of the things that I really use to guide me through this process um, is um, our founder, Cy Red, who founded the company, uh, had written a book. I never had the chance to meet him called The King of Slots, and I've read that book. It's all dog-eared and highlighted, and, and one of the things I learned from him by reading this book is, you know, he talks over and over and over again, because he actually transformed IGT pretty dramatically during his time, right, from a video poker company to a slot machine company, and, and did a lot of very interesting things, and one of the things he says repeatedly is that when you look at your business, um, appreciate it, respect it, nurture it, but don't ever settle for it. And it really has been that that has really guided us, I think, as we've thought about, you know, let's be as bold as Cy Red was in his days. And so I think what we've done at IGT isn't new for IGT. It's the way we've always pioneered. We've always uh, been the first to market. So when I think about our business today, um, I think it is a very healthy business. We're obviously the market leader on a global basis, which is just an incredible thing to be able to say. Um, and I think our, you know, our position in the marketplace is one that reflects our breadth of products because we have the broadest breadth of products, including, you know, 95%-ish of the video poker market, which a lot of people forget about in our industry, but a very, very important part of our business, two systems, two transmissive reels, two video reels, applications, online, everything in between. And so where the business is today, I would say, is that we have built this incredible foundation that is a, a, has a multi-distribution model that goes to market in all these different ways around the globe. Um, and the foundation is really solid. And the company of the future, I believe, is a company that exercises that foundation a bit harder than we're exercising it today. We've been spending the last three or four years building the foundation. And the foundation is now built, in my mind. Um, and really, when I think about what we've done, Frank, over the last five years, it's really to get the company caught up. It had fallen behind. It had fallen behind in technology. It had fallen behind in innovation. It had fallen behind in its distribution, its business modeling, if you will, um, and embracing new technologies. And so we've caught it up. And now we need to sprint ahead of the pack a bit. Talking about your. Um uh, core products. Mm -hmm. You had a great announcement the other day, a renewal of your, or not a renewal, but a contract with Caesars to play 7,000 video poker machines. Yeah, you know, this video poker business, again, it's one that we easily forget about, um, but it is a very important part of the, um, the lineup of gambling experiences that exist in casinos. In many bars and taverns, it's the only product um, that exists. And uh, though it has been a very slow market to renew, uh, the products are very old, very dated, uh, with a lot of loyalty from their players, and we appreciate that. And our real challenge, I think, as a company, 
was to take that business forward without disrupting the loyalty and the familiarity and uh, not an easy thing to do and it was really I think demonstrating that to Caesars that gave them the courage to um, say let's go ahead and go through a replacement process um, because we can't afford to go through a replacement process and disenfranchise players that look forward to this product. So, You, you use the word bold and probably no company is as assert, no uh, American based supplier certainly is as assertive or bold into moving into the interactive space as IGT. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it's, in, uh, first of all, I think we have been amazingly bold in the online space, um, interactive around the globe. Um, I will, however, give great credit to the people who came before me at IGT because I was fortunate enough to inherit an infrastructure. They'd made investments in wager works and they were already exercising their muscle in the um, interactive space um, outside the United States and we had to take it up a level. Um, so I will say, you know, it was great that we had a foundation and now we're really working with that foundation. Um, and I think moving from the interactive real money wagering where we have been immensely successful um, in the European markets, also in Canada, uh, but moving into the social gaming space was probably the biggest and boldest right. move that we've made um, in my tenure at IGT. And um, everyone has their own opinion of it. I will tell you it was a well-informed step. It was um, educated risk. It wasn't just risk for risk's sake. Uh, we recognize that the legislative process in the U.S. to approve online gaming was slow at best <laughs> and uh, that if we wanted to distribute our content more broadly to devices like mobile devices and, and notebooks and desktops that it likely was not going to be in a real money wagering business model for many years and we could decide to be a victim of the legislative process or we could decide to take control of our own destiny which we did and I will tell you there's rarely an opportunity for a CEO to look back yeah. at an acquisition and say this absolutely outperformed every assumption we had going in our theory as you know was that if you took this social infrastructure that D Double Down um, had built very robustly and you added our game library content to that, that that one and one would be three. I would say one and ones turned out to be more like five for us, which has been great. Um, so it's been, I think, really an amazing, bold step that is not only returning, but it is starting to reshape culturally the way IGT thinks about itself. In addition to the changes that you've been part of at IGT, the surrounding industry has changed dramatically uh, in so many ways, technologically, competitors are rising. Uh, you had observed, for example, that when you first came on the IGT board, there were five competitors exhibiting at G2E. This year, there are 16. In that environment, every company is seeking out a competitive edge. What is IGT's competitive advantage? Yeah, it is getting more fragmented by the day. Um, I think there may be more than 16 if I walked away yeah. around the floor here today. Um, I would say our competitive edge lies in a couple of areas. One is the way we exercise technology, and I would say that's across the board, whether it's in our systems business or the way we um, integrate technology into our games. It's the 3D technology, it's game mechanics, it's graphics, it's everything. So I would say it's the number one is the integration of technology into the experience is kind of number one and the secret sauce we have around that. Number two is the content library. I mean. I think that we've proven over and over again as we've gone into new distribution models like social gaming, like real money wagering, our content always comes out on top. I mean, no matter which customer I talk to, when we talk about what are the top 10 games that are earning for you, we're always at least half of them, if not more. And so the content library, I would say, is probably number two. Number three would be our distribution model. I mean, we have a broad-based distribution model that I think is a nice collection of going direct to consumers or to customers to operators going through distribution in markets where it doesn't make sense for us to have but we are in broadly every part of the world and that's very unusual most suppliers you know deselect certain markets and we've made a decision to be everywhere and sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good and in this particular case where our now operator customers are also starting to become international we're finding that the decision to do that is now paying dividends for us because you have customers for instance in South Africa who are buying a casino in 
South America. And so that notion of being everywhere matters to them more than everywhere, and then the, more than ever. And then the last thing really is our size. I mean, we have the broadest product portfolio, and that works. When you're around a table with a customer that you can check every box, it really matters competitively. And I think you see that reflected in some of the combinations that are happening in the industry where they're filling in product voids that they right. need to have the same sort of heft at the table with a customer. We're here at G2E where everybody shows off their uh, newest and their best. Uh, what are the one or two products that people absolutely must see before they leave this show? Well, the one or two IGT products, which I think are the most important products to see, um, my team would absolutely uh, toss me overboard if I didn't say Avatar. Um, it did win best slot of show. We found out last night and we're so proud of that. So. I just think that it is such an interesting, it's, we're, we're showing it on our new crystal core cabinet. Um, so I think that the depth and the richness of experience, and I think the, the work with the folks at Lightstorm to include them, who own, own the brand, to include them in the design, it just has such a real avatar feeling that you do feel like you're immersed in the experience. So avatar, I would say, put at the top of your list. The second thing would be to do the double down experience. I think we are the first uh, manufacturer ever to actually take a product and turn it into a Disney style ride and having an opportunity to go through the double down experience and immerse yourself in it, I think gives you as an operator a different appreciation for the role this can play in what you're trying to accomplish with your own players. Okay, one final question. Uh, what is it that you would like customers or investors to better understand about IGT? Uh, it's not sexy, but I would say, uh, you know, that we get up every day at IGT with our customers, employees, and investors in mind and we, we work our heart, hearts out every day for these people. And uh, nothing is better than delighting a customer. I think we listen um, very hard to our constituents. You can't make everybody happy all the time, but I think you find very interesting common threads when you talk to customers and employees and investors, and you find those common threads and focus on that common ground, and you just work that common ground over and over and over again. And I was talking to an investor yesterday, and I said to him, you know, I know what you want to hear from me is some big, bold, sexy thing that we're doing, but what we're doing is applying elbow grease every single day to make the world better for you. Whether you've invested with, uh, wh whether you have bet on us with your money by buying stock or buying our products or betting your career with our company, you know, we have the elbow grease applied every day to make certain that you're delighted with what we're doing. Sounds to me like it's a new uh, slogan for you, making the world better for you. Sounds like a good one, Frank. I'll steal that. <laughs> Patty, very informative. Thank yes, you. Yes, thanks much. so much, Frank. Thank you.